Every gardener dreams of that dark, crumbly humus that smells like a forest floor, rich, moist, and full of life. So when earthworms appear in your beds, you expect to see that transformation happen naturally. But sometimes, despite hundreds of worms tunneling, eating, and casting, the soil stays dull, compacted, or sandy. You dig a little expecting humus, but it's still just half-rotted matter and lifeless crumbs. The problem isn't the worms, it's the missing conditions that allow them to finish the cycle of organic matter into true humus. Worms don't make humus. They help microbes do it. Earthworms are incredible recyclers. They shred organic waste, mix it with soil, and excrete nutrient-rich castings. But worm castings alone are not humus. Humus forms only after microbial and fungal processing continues beyond what worms can do. In short, worms prepare the meal, but microbes finish the digestion. If the soil lacks the microbial diversity or mineral structure to stabilize that organic matter, the castings quickly oxidize and lose carbon. That's why you can have healthy worms but still no stable humus. The final step of the decomposition chain is missing. Amish and regenerative farmers understand this principle deeply. They don't just attract worms, they feed the soil microbes that follow them. The two systems, worm digestion and microbial mineralization, must work together. Without minerals like calcium and magnesium, binding the organic molecules, the carbon-rich material breaks down into gases and vanishes. Humus, by definition, is the stable form of carbon that resists further decay. To reach that stage, the soil needs balance, not just biology. The real problem is mineral imbalance and low fungal activity. Most worm-heavy gardens rely heavily on soft, nitrogen-rich matter, kitchen scraps, green clippings, or manure. This feeds the worms but creates an unstable, fast-decaying compost that burns off instead of forming long-lasting humus. The worms thrive in it, but the result stays loose, temporary, and structurally weak. To form humus, the process must shift from bacterial to fungal dominance. Fungi are the true humus builders. They bind the worm casts, glue soil particles with polysaccharides, and polymerize organic acids into stable complexes. If your beds dry out too quickly, smell sour, or show clumpy castings that collapse when wet, your soil likely lacks fungal mass and trace minerals. The fix begins by rebalancing your feedstock ratio. Instead of constantly feeding your worms with greens or manure, start introducing one part woody, carbon-heavy material for every two parts soft organic waste. Chop dry leaves, shredded bark, or even sawdust in small amounts help fungi colonize. These tougher carbons slow decomposition just enough for stable humic bonds to form. The Amish composters often layer fine wood chips or cornstalk shreds over worm beds to encourage this exact process. Adding the right minerals helps lock humus into the soil. Calcium, magnesium and iron serve as the molecular hooks that bond organic matter into stable humic complexes. Without these, carbon gets released as carbon dioxide instead of staying bound in soil. The simplest way to fix this is to lightly dust worm beds or compost areas with a mineral blend, something as basic as rock dust or finely crushed eggshells. For every 10 kilograms of compost material or bedding, Add about two handfuls of basalt rock dust or one cup of ground eggshell powder. If you have wood ash from clean hardwood, use just a tablespoon per kilogram of feedstock. Too much ash can raise the pH beyond what worms and fungi like. This mineral infusion balances the chemistry and ensures that when worms deposit their casts, the microbial colonies can stabilize the material into humus instead of letting it gas off or leach away. Humus won't form in dry or anaerobic soil. Moisture balances everything. Worms and microbes need constant moisture, but too much water suffocates them and stops fungal development. The target is a moisture level like a wrung-out sponge. Damp, not dripping. A simple trick used in Amish worm beds is covering the soil surface with old straw, shredded cardboard, or partially rotted leaves. This keeps the microclimate stable, prevents moisture loss, and gives fungi a protected surface to grow through. If your garden beds are outdoors and prone to drying, you can also create hydration zones by adding small pockets of half-rotted compost mixed with aloe vera slurry or molasses water. One tablespoon of molasses in a gallon of water, poured gently around worm clusters, boosts microbial energy while keeping the area moist. 
worms will naturally migrate toward these rich, balanced pockets and begin cycling the material through their systems again. The result is a living compost engine under your mulch rather than a surface-level worm colony that produces temporary fertility. Overfeeding worms with soft waste can actually destroy the humus potential, you know? Many gardeners unintentionally suffocate the soil food web by dumping too much nitrogen material at once, like banana peels, melon rinds, or coffee grounds in big piles. These break down really fast, create heat, and use up a lot of oxygen. Worms might still be hanging around, but microbial diversity just crashes. The result is rapid decay without any real stabilization. A much better rhythm is small, consistent feeding. Add no more than a two-inch layer of fresh waste every week and always cover it with dry carbon material, like leaf mold or shredded paper. This keeps the carbon to nitrogen ratio right around 25 to 30 to 1, which is the sweet spot for humus formation. If your worm bin or bed starts smelling sour or you see slimy patches, that's the first sign the system is skewing bacterial. Just sprinkle a little rock dust, cut back on feeding for a week, and let the fungal layer recover. Once that earthy smell comes back, humus formation will resume all on its own. You'll know the process is working when the soil texture really transforms, the castings stop looking like sticky pellets and start binding into these rich, crumbly aggregates that stay moist for longer. When you squeeze them, they hold their shape but don't release any water. The smell changes, too. It shifts from sweet decay to more of a forest floor aroma. That's stable humus, carbon locked with minerals and fungal glues. This material won't just disappear after a rain or a dry spell. It holds nutrients supports mycorrhizal networks, and keeps your worms active at just the right pace, instead of racing through unstable matter. When this balance is achieved, every handful of soil becomes its own miniature ecosystem. Worms, microbes, fungi, and minerals all working together in a continuous loop. The Amish call this living earth, and honestly, it's the foundation of soil fertility that doesn't wash away or depend on fertilizers. The real secret to humus is balance, not just worms alone. Earthworms are powerful allies, sure, but they can't create humus by themselves. They need a mineral base, fungal partners, and consistent moisture to really finish the job. When you provide these three factors, carbon balance, trace minerals, and moisture stability, their work becomes permanent. Humus just builds up naturally year after year, instead of vanishing between seasons. So, if your worms are working overtime, and you still don't see humus forming, don't blame them. Just fine-tune the environment they're working in. Reintroduce minerals, feed the fungi, and balance the moisture. That's truly the difference between temporary fertility and soil that renews itself for decades. For more proven methods to turn your garden into a living ecosystem, go ahead and subscribe to Hydrohaven and share this guide with fellow growers. The key to lasting soil health isn't just worms, it's understanding what keeps their world alive beneath the surface.